Welcome ACCA Performance Management students. My name is Steve Willis. Today we are looking at decision making under risk and uncertainty. We are looking at the past exam question, shifters. It's an oldie, it's a goodie. Let's get started. I've got the question open on my screen here. This is from the olden days before computer-based exams, but there's no reason we can't do it in the practice platform. So I'm going to open this PDF on another screen. I'm going to go into the practice platform. I'm going to do it. I recommend you guys do the same thing. Pause the video, open the practice platform, try this at home. You can find this question in your revision question banks, your question books. I, I've also given you the, the link to the PDF below so you can download load it. I will take you through the numerical parts. We'll do the profit table, and then we will look at the different risk attitudes. We'll look at maxi max, maxi min, and we'll even throw mini max regret into the mix. Pause the video, try it on your own, and then we'll work together. Alrighty, friends, I am in the spreadsheet. I've tried it. Let me show you how I did it. And it's a pretty tricky question. There are a couple of difficult points. However, there are enough easy things to do that you could still get a pass, even if you got a little stuck at some point. Now, decision-making under risk and uncertainty, what decision am I trying to make? Well, I'm trying to decide what size van should I buy? And the standard approach I will use is to make a column for my decision. Next to that, I can put the uncertainty, which is the demand. And I have three types of van and two different demand states. Three times two is six. So I will have six rows in my spreadsheet. I can buy the small van, which holds 100. I can buy the medium van, 150, or the large van, 200. All right, those are my six options, and demand can be big or small, and that was 120 and 190, right? So it can be 120 or 190. That's the first step of doing one of these questions, understanding how many rows we need in our spreadsheet and getting this part set up. After we understand this, we then need to build a P&L. And we've got our revenue at $10 a unit. We've got a variable cost. We've got some depreciation. And then we've got the we've got two conditional things to think about, right? If the capacity is greater than the demand or if the demand is greater than the capacity, and lastly a profit Right, so I'm setting up a template before I do any math, right? So we got the sales at the $10. We've got the variable cost at $4. Let's use a dollar sign there. Let me go back and fix that as well. It's $10 a unit. Now, we have these conditional situations, right? If capacity is greater than demand. We drive around with some half full trucks and our fuel consumption will be lower. That's when capacity is greater than demand. That's the good thing. Or if demand is greater than capacity, then we lose customer goodwill. And the, the difference of those columns is the profit, right? So first step, so before you get crunching the numbers, you need to set up a profit table as I have just done. Now, as I've shown you in other videos, the sales column will be the lower of the two figures in, set in columns B and C. If we buy the, the small van, we'll only sell 100. If we buy the 150 size van, okay, we will sell either 120 or 150. To do the revenue column, 
I'm going to use a function that I've shown you in other videos. Let me show you how that works again. Well, the volume that we sell will be the lower of the van size or the demand, right? If I buy the small van, maximum I'm going to sell is 100. If I buy the medium van, I will sell 120 or 150, right? I'll sell 120 if de demand is low and, one nine, and, and then 150 if demand is high. I, I can't sell more than my van holds. And the way I'll do that, I will open up equal sign and I will use the minimum function and I grab the minimum here, okay? The range sells columns B to C, close that out. There we go. That will grab and I'm copy pasting it down. I could have just dragged that cell. That would have been faster. Look at that. That's a pretty cool tool to get the, the smallest number in a range of cells. Now we need to multiply that by $10. So come back up here, multiply by 10. Now I can grab the corner, drag it down. And there we go. That is my revenue. Variable cost will be the same thing. And again, I can just rebuild that faster than adjusting a pasted formula. That will be equal to the minimum of the van size and the demand multiplied by negative four. Drag that down. Guys, I realize I forgot the depreciation, silly me. So at this point, I just can cut, control X and paste and find a parking, make a parking place for my depreciation. Okay. And that's the beauty of the spreadsheet tool. You can fix things on the fly. And we have negative 200, negative 200, negative 300. That's a 300 cost or a cost of 400. Okay. And I'll just copy that, those figures into the right places. Copy, paste, control C, control V, control C, control V. Guys, there we go. Now, conditional situation. If capacity is greater than demand, we have a good thing, right? We have our a 10% lower variable cost. I could use a conditional equation equals if, okay, open up the brackets and I can start typing that out. But unlike Microsoft Excel, you don't get any help when you build up your functions. So if there's a little error in there, you're just going to get an error. You're not going to know what's wrong. And in my experience, at some point, it's easier just to, to break spreadsheet best practice and do things a little manually. So I'm just going to look through here. It's a small table. Where is capacity greater than demand? In row five and seven and eight. Okay, so in row five, I'm just going to come here. That'll be equal to the variable cost multiplied by negative 0.1, 10%. Copy, paste, paste, okay? Quick and dirty. There are no marks for spreadsheet skills or financial modeling. So unless you are just the spreadsheet guru of the world, do that at your own risk using, the, using complicated functions. Keep it simple. Just get through this. Okay, guys? Now, the other situation is the bad sign. This is when we lose customers. If, if we, we do not meet our demand, then our customers go away and they don't come back again. They go to our competitors. So that's going to be a negative 100 here when demand is greater. When demand is greater than capacity. Okay, there we have it. Now the profit column will just be the sum of the PL items to the right. Very carefully select the range. I just love that blue box. It makes me happy every time I make a function in the practice platform. And look at that. Drag this down. Okay, there we go. That is our profit table. Let me 
bold out my column headings to make it a little clear, clearer. Okay, I could apply some formatting, but guys, that's crystal clear to read right now. There are no marks for formatting. So I'm just gonna leave it as it is. Anybody could read this spreadsheet right now. Okay, now, maxi max, right? That is maximize the maximum profit, the decision rule for the risk seeker. They're gonna go with the biggest number in the table, ignoring the downside of risk. Maxi max, okay, risk seeker maximize the maximum profit we'll choose 200 large van okay now the risk averse decision maker is going to look at the worst case situation right when demand is low 120 120 120 and now we can just look at the profits and it's either 300, 468, 368, okay? That would be maxi min. Spell that right, maxi min. That's the decision rule for the risk averse decision maker. Choose the medium van. Right. There we have it. Guys, that's what they wanted in the question to identify which van would be chosen according to the two risk, um, the, the two rules under risk and uncertainty. But just for fun, let's throw down Minimax Regret. Now, to do Minimax Regret, I like to make a regret table, okay? And to make a regret table, we can make a quick payout table. So the payout table, we're going to transpose and turn this table into a two-dimensional table. So we can do demand over here. Demand can be low, 120 or 190. All right, and then we can do the van that we choose. The van can be the small with 100, the medium, 150, or the large, 200. And we're just gonna copy those figures from above into this table. So that's 300, 300, 468, 500. Okay, and 368. That is a starting place when we are doing Minimax Regret. Let me just make it clearer, my column and my row headings, I'm making those bold. All right, now, in order to do Minimax Regret, we need to make a regret table. That's a fancy way of saying the opportunity costs. We're going to help the sore loser make their decision. This is the person who wants to avoid looking bad from making the wrong choice, avoiding uh, opportunity costs and we go down the demand states. So I can just copy the same table here. Copy, paste, let's come down a little bit, okay? Let me empty this out so I don't need any figures there. And I'm gonna go down the demand states and I'm gonna say, wow, if I choose the medium van, and the demand is low, that's the best thing I can do, the medium van. So that would be no opportunity cost. I made the best decision. Everyone around me will say, oh, you did a good job. You, you really predicted the demand well and made the best decision. Now, guys, if the demand is low and I chose 200, people would look at me and say, oh, not so good. You lost $100 from making the wrong decision. You're not so good at picking demand, at choosing demand. Okay, now, worst thing that I could do under low demand would be to choose the small van. And the difference between the best and the worst is 168, right? 168, that's the difference between 300, 468. So guys, that's essentially the opportunity cost of not choosing the best van. Now, 
If demand was 190 and I chose the large van, everyone would say, you're a rock star. Well done. You didn't lose any money. You did the best. I'm going to, I'm going to hire you to choose demand for me in the future. Now, what would happen here? If demand is high and we chose 150, that's the difference between 816 and 500. That's a 316 opportunity cost. Last but not least, that would be a 516, the difference between 300 and 816. No need to use the spreadsheet functions here. They're simple numbers. Mental math is fine. Okay. Now, I'm going to now go across. I'm going to look at my decisions. And I want to find the maximum regret for each decision I'm going to make. Now, check this out. I can just go like this equals max. And I can use the same and just grab the biggest. Oop, there we go. Copy, paste, paste. So if I would like to avoid looking bad in other people's eyes from making the wrong choice, right? I want to minimize the maximum regret or the, the minimize the maximum opportunity cost. I would choose the large van. Okay. Any max regret. That's the decision rule for the sore loser. Choose the large, I can spell today, guys, large van. Okay. Guys, there you go. The full story, maxi max, maxi min, mini max regret. Guys, I hope you found this video useful. Um, throw down a like, feel free to subscribe if you did, friends. Good luck on your upcoming exam. This is Steve signing out for now.